So welcome to my amazing video of this porch storage unit I'm building uh, as part of my carpentry plans. Uh, we're going to cover the full build, how to make the framework, we're going to do the crate, the jigs uh, for dowel joinery, some plans, always draw plans before you uh, carry out the installation uh, or the build. Um, we're going to cover how I made the doors out of decking boards and they were glued and screwed and then clamped. They've come out quite well. A uh, cheaper way of doing it rather than buying sheet material. Uh, so hold tight, watch the build from start to finish. I'm going to do this in little episodes of 10 minutes. So I hope you like the video. So here you can see me cutting the frame uh, for the porch door unit. I'm using 4x2 pressure treated timber so it's tantalised. Um, I will do a proper video on doing the frame because I lost some of it so I will do that later. So I'm using the circular saw to cut them to size. I've got a cut list so uh, otherwise you just waste a lot of timber if you don't plan it all out. So here you can see me, uh, I've got a clamps look, I'm clamping it onto the worktop. And this is the finished framework, which I will do a video on because I use pocket holes and glue to secure it. And I'm using panhead screws to secure them into the framework. These uh, are a swivel and they lock as well, and they're relatively cheap on Amazon. So this is a work. Uh, this is a jig. This is what you use on feather boards. Use it for the fence. You can see on the right, or when you want to space it out correctly. It's just two bits of feather board cut, and then as you'll see in a second, you use it to align it both sides. So every feather board is perfectly spaced. Obviously, you have to plan it out so that you can see me using it now both sides, and I'll use that all the way down on so it keeps it even both sides. So I'm nailing the feather boards on with 35mm galvanised nails and then what you'll do and you'll see me as I've worked my way down I will then use a circular saw I see I've got it inside now and I've just used a circular saw to cut that so it's level with the frame. So it's back on its uh, wheels so now I'm going to be doing the work top uh, so what I did here was decking boards uh, I've let them dry out under the canopy for a while. They're turned upside down uh, and then I've cut them with a chop saw. I've then nailed them on uh, across that top frame there and I've used pocket holes and glue to glue them together because in the summer and winter they'll expand and contract and split. Uh, so you'll see me in a minute with a chop saw uh, cutting them to size. So here you can see me using the chop saw to cut the decking boards. Um, got a new blade in this actually, it's amazing. Uh, cuts it really smooth. So I'm cutting the uh, decking boards to size for the work size for the work top, lining them all up. I do have put a face um, a mitered face frame around the edge in a minute. So uh, I'm sort of thinking on my feet as I build this as well and putting in new ideas. So that's the uh, the decking boards all laid out. And these are now ready to glue and screw, and then I'll secure them to the uh, to the framework. Uh, this is my porch storage unit. Um, I forgot to film putting the top in, but it's basically just uh, decking boards turned over. Uh, glued and screwed together with uh, pocket holes I did and dowels so I cut it to size I've got to root it all off and sand it so all I've done is glued it together let it dry clamped it um, 
put a bit of sand in in, in the gap. So it doesn't do perfect, it's not joiner, it's for just in this canopy. So it's, it's pressure treated wood, but it's not um, it's not waterproof as such. It's gonna have bits of pressure treated wood in there, some cement or seal, that kind of stuff. But it's under here anyway. I haven't built it to be fully waterproof, but just to be outdoors. So uh, yeah, so it's on wheels. So I've just cladded it with some, some, uh, oh my head's gone, but you know, so that's going to be the back, this is the, in the front and I'm going to build two doors. So the next step is to build, do the back, which I'm using, pickets, fence pickets. So I'm putting on and I'll cut, so that's the next job. I've done the sides, so I'm just going to do the front doors now. Pressure treated, and then I'm going to clad it with, it's all bits of spares I've got, it's all it is is a wood store. So uh, I'm going to do some tongue on groove inset and some, uh, where's the hinge? A bit posh really, but I got these on Amazon and they're, they're really good, so I'm just going to, um, have one either side should take it because hardly it's just for odds and sods. That's going to go on there, and I'm going to inset the door. Look quite nice. So here you can um, see I'm using a laser level to get the nails nice and straight, and I'm using these 35 mil galvanised nails. So they're used for outdoors, so they don't rust and let rust drain down onto your uh, featherboards. I use a hammer for small jobs like this. I've got a nail gun, but really you're supposed to use the collated nail gun uh, for stuff like this. Um, I've got a brad nailer, which you'll see me using in a minute, which is 18 gauge, but that's not the correct nails for external. Uh, the heads aren't big enough, etc. I'm also using my laser level, but that's more of a guide because obviously the laser level centers on the floor, but obviously the storage unit isn't even, but it's just a guide to nail. Right, so I'm now gluing and screwing the decking boards, which will be the doors for the front of the storage unit. I'm using glue, proper external wood glue. Um, I think it sticks like, was it the Gorilla? It's Gorilla glue. Uh, and then using O-wing clamps, and I'm using pocket holes, which are manually, pot hole screws, but I'm manually um, drilling them in which you can do, because that's the underside you're seeing now, there's the ribbed version, I'm using the flat side. So gluing, screwing and clamping, and I'll leave them overnight, um, and that will give me a sheet material for the worktop, which is a cheaper way of doing it, rather than buying sheet material. And it looks quite nice, which you'll see, especially on the doors. I uh, later on use uh, teak oil, and I put three coats on, and I'm quite happy with the result, which you'll see later. Uh, so you can see me here now using the pocket hole jig on the, this is still the doors. Um, so I will do a further video on that and you'll see me using the bigger version in the frame when I construct the frame. I'm going to do that video today. So what I'm doing, I'm going to do the doors, two double doors. With the stopper behind so we get the full width, nothing in the middle to give us loads of room in there. Right now these are the doors, uh, obviously I'll cut them into the dimensions later, this is for both doors, they'll be cut in half and sized. So you'll see the sash clamps I'm using, so I've clamped one side three boards, three or four, and the other side's two. I'll be clamping them all together now, uh, I'll be gluing them, uh, sash clamping them, you can see the sash clamps there swinging in the picture so they'll be uh, it'll be clamped up tight and then it'll be left uh, for 24 hours to um, to dry and then it'll be a solid piece of sheet material so this is the internal shelf uh, I've used bits of scrap wood uh, I think a three by one so I trimmed up on the track saw uh, and this will just be the shelf that's going inside, you'll see me inserting it in a minute. 
Just to know, I, use, I always use external grade screws. This is me putting the uh, shelf in position. Yeah, I always use external grade screws, so I tend to use the quality ones from screws that say do a big pack for like 40 odd quid, um, because these work better with pressurized timber, tantalized timber. Here you can see me using the uh, jig, which I use for my dowel joinery. I will do another video on this, but Peter Millard does a really good video on this uh, jig. I'll put a link below. But here you see me using the, uh, the jig, the dowel jig. Uh, I'm clamping, and this is just a mitered um, edge to go around the worktop. It, I need it to stick out a bit more so if water does get on top of it it'll just drip off it'll have a drip edge all the way around a bit like a roof which will stop it dripping down the uh, feather boards and getting into the uh, inside so here you can see one section already doweled in onto the worktop and I'm doing 45 degree miters all around and this is the drip edge so it will just shed water off and not let it drip down on the feather board. So we are cutting. So that's there. Right, that's there. So. so here I'm using my wonderful Makita track saw. I will, it's not a plunger, it's just a track saw improvised. Uh, but uh, I use it with Hoover, it's brilliant. I'm using it now here to cut the doors. So they've dried, sash clamps, glued and screwed, they're all dried uh, together. So now I'm cutting it to the dimensions to give me two front doors. So the fun bit's all coming together. So I'm fitting the two front doors, they've been cut to shape. Uh, I've allowed a gap of about 10 mil, so obviously it's, it still will expand and contract slightly because it's outside and it's a softwood pressure treated. So I'm using clamps and packers to get it aligned uh, and then I'm putting the hinges on which I've done a link below uh, from Amazon. They're external uh, so, and proper black matching screws. So I think these look quite nice. So I, uh, yeah, so I'm fitting them up and just sizing them up, but later on in the video you'll see me taking these doors back off and putting a face frame because I didn't like the look of the 4x2 um, timber, so I've sort of done a, what have I done? I've done a new face frame with uh, cladding, which looks a lot better than just 4x2 CLS timber, which you'll see later. Okay, so next we are sanding, so I've got my orbital sander on on medium speed with, I think I've started on 80, then I went to 120 and then 200. So uh, I did use a belt sander a bit too severe and I got a little detail sander, but this is the best, best option really. Sanding with the grain, wearing dust mask, glasses, etc. You do get a lot of dust in your eyes. I sometimes use my Hoover and then just taking it back um, ready for staining so yes right now i'm filling any holes i'm using a mixture of uh, wood glue and the sawdust from the sanding to create a filler. Uh, this worked okay, but I think I'd still rather, bit rather in future use a stainable filler because it's very hard to sand. So that's all folks, the end of part one. Uh, look forward to part two. I'll be downloading that in the next few days. Any comments, questions, please let me know, like and subscribe. Thank you.